Today I want to talk about the verbs that we use to describe the position or the place of an object. You might be thinking, why not just use to be, sein? In English, you can say, the chair is in the corner or my wallet's on the table. You just use is. In Dutch, unfortunately, you can't use to be. In Dutch, we have four different verbs that we would use in this situation. Staan, liggen, zitten, and hangen. So instead of the stool is in the hoek, or the beurs is op de tafel, we have to say something else using these four verbs. But how do you know which one to use? People will understand what you mean if you say sein, but to describe the position or the place of an object, you really should use staan, legen, zitten, or hangen. Now, let's look at each of these verbs and see when you should use them. Staan is the most common one. It means to stand if you're talking about a person or an animal. But we also use it for objects. If I want to say the chair is in the corner, for example, I have to say the stool staat in the hook. The stool staat in the hook. Now, take a look around your room and think for yourself which objects may be standing up in Dutch. Now let's look at some rules. We always use the verb staan in the following situations. We use staan when you talk about something that's tall, that's, you know, taller than it's wide, for example, like, say, a glass or a vase. For example, the vas staat op de tafel. The vase is on the table. The vas staat op de tafel. We also use it for things that have legs. Not people, not animals, but objects with legs, like a table or a chair. For example, the tafel staat buiten. The table's outside. The tafel staat buiten. A third very common category of situations where we use staan is for box-shaped objects, like, say, a computer or a couch. Um, they're generally shaped kind of like a three-dimensional box shape. So if something is, you know, large and square, we generally use staan. For example, the computer staat op het bureau. The computer staat op het bureau. The computer is on the desk. A fourth category, which is also pretty common, but less than the other three, is everything on wheels. So everything that's on wheels is described using staan. Uh, say for example a car or a bicycle. For example, the auto staat in the garage. The auto staat in the garage. The car is in the garage. Now there's one extra kind of funny category for staan, and that is for text and images. So whenever you talk about text or images, you have to use staan. Um, for example, je naam staat in de krant. Your name is in the newspaper. Je naam staat in de krant. You cannot use zijn for any of these situations. Je naam is in de krant would not be a correct Dutch sentence. Again, we know what you mean, but it just doesn't sound right to us. So as you can see, we use staan for quite a few different cases. In fact, we use it more often than the other three verbs that we use to describe the position or the place of an object. So if you're unsure, just use staan. There's a good chance you'll be correct. Nevertheless, we'll still look into the other three verbs so you know what to do. But if you forget, just use staan. Let's try a little exercise. Try to translate, the chair is in my room. The chair is in my room. How would you say that in Dutch? 
Here's the answer. De stoel staat in mijn kamer. De stoel staat in mijn kamer. Why staan? Well, because the chair is on four legs. You know, everything that's on legs staat. It's kind of like, you know, animals and humans. We have legs. If an object has legs, it kind of makes sense that they also stand, right? Well, that's Dutch logic for you. We can also use staan and also all the other verbs to say there is or there are. So if you just want to introduce a new object into your conversation, in English you would say there is a chair. Well, in Dutch you cannot say is for the position or the place of an object, so you have to use, in this case, staan. You combine this with er, and then you just use the verb. For example, er staat in stoel in de kamer. Er staat in stoel in de kamer. There is a chair in the room. It's always just er plus staat, licht, zit, or hangt. So always the third person conjugation. So now all you need to know is which verb to use. So let's continue with liggen. Liggen means to lie, like to lie in bed, you know. When we lie down, we say liggen. The man ligt in bed, for example. But we're talking about objects here. We use liggen to describe the place or the position of everything that is flat, like flat on the floor, or flat on the bed, or flat on any surface. You use liggen. For example, het boek ligt op de tafel. The book is on the table. Het boek ligt op de tafel. The book is flat. It's not standing up. It could be, and then you could use staan, but if the book is like this, you can say het boek ligt op de tafel. Another example. Je trui ligt op de bank. Je trui Licht op de bank. That means your sweater is on the couch. Your sweater is on the couch. You know, a sweater doesn't have much substance to it. It's very flexible. So if you let it go, gravity will, you know, make sure it lies flat. And that's why we say liggen. Another example. Je bankpas ligt in de keuken. Je bankpas ligt in de keuken. That means your bank card is in the kitchen. You know, a bank card is no way you could make that stand up unless you make a little card tower out of it. But, <laughs> so it will lie flat. When you put it down, it will lie flat. So in Dutch we say liggen. Kind of makes sense, right? Now there's another situation where we use liggen. That's pretty common, it's pretty good to know. For cities and towns. So if you want to say where a city or a town is located, you also have to say liggen. Maybe that makes less sense, but, you know, we still say it that way. Let's go through some examples. Amsterdam ligt in Nederland. Amsterdam ligt in Nederland. Amsterdam is in the Netherlands. We cannot say is in Nederland, because we simply use these four verbs to describe the location of things. Another example. Nairobi ligt in Kenya. Nairobi ligt in Kenya. Nairobi is in Kenya, it's the capital. A third example of the location. Brugge ligt in het westen van België. Brugge ligt in het westen van België. Bruges is in the west of Belgium. It's a beautiful city, by the way. There's another situation where we use Leiden, and this one is kind of strange, because it's very specific. We also use lehen for balls. So everything that's shaped like a ball, like a piece of fruit, maybe an apple, or a football, or anything that's shaped like a ball, we also use lehen. For example, de voetbal ligt in de kast. De voetbal ligt in de kast. The football is in the closet. Now you give it a try. How would you say your money is on the table. Your money is on the table. 
En dat staat op bij. Je geld ligt op de tafel. Je geld ligt op de tafel. Here's a more difficult one for you to translate. Why is my coat on the floor? Why is my coat on the floor? And if you don't know, coat is jas. Here's the answer. Waarom ligt mijn jas op de vloer? Waarom ligt mijn jas op de vloer? Or op de grond, if you want. It means more or less the same thing. So, even with questions, you also have to use staan, liggen, zitten, or hangen. Just the same. Now let's move on to the third verb, zitten. Zitten is a little funny. It means to sit. Now, when do objects sit? I can't really think of any object that sits. But, in Dutch, we use it for a very specific case, but it's still pretty common. Zitten is used for everything that's inside another object. So, for example, inside my pocket. What sits er in mijn boekzak? Een doekje. So I can say, er zit een doekje in mijn boekzak. What else is in my pockets? Ah, oh, keys. De sleutels zitten in mijn broekzak. De sleutels zitten in mijn broekzak. The keys are in my pocket. So, that's because the object is inside something else. I have to use zitten. I cannot use liggen or staan or anything else. I have to use zitten. Wat zit er in jouw broekzak? Take a look and make your sentence in Dutch. And if you don't have uh, pockets, maybe try your handbag. Wat zit er in je handtas? Let's look at some more examples though. Zitten is also used not just for objects inside of other objects, but also for liquids inside a bottle or inside a glass. For example, er zit geen water in de fles. Er zit geen water in de fles. There's no water in the bottle. Or another one. Zit er nog koffie in zijn kopje? Zit er nog koffie in zijn kopje? Is there any coffee in his cup? Or the last one. Of, er zit een vliegje in mijn oog. Er zit een vliegje in mijn oog. That means, there's a little fly in my eye. Even that, that's something in something else. A fly in my eye. Well, not inside of it, but still, it's close enough, so we use zitten. That's a funny example, but the use of zitten maybe for non-Dutch speakers is a little strange, so maybe that will make you remember it. Remember how I said that zitten is used for objects that are inside something else? Well, you know, we need to look at this in a little more detail. Because before we said, for example, the stool staat in the kamer. And you could argue the chair is inside something else, the room. So why don't we use zitten there? Well, the reason is that a room is quite large, and we only use zitten if the object is inside something smaller, like my pockets or my bag, or maybe my wallet, for example. Zitten is not used when we're talking about something being inside of a room, or inside of a house, or even inside of a closet. Then we just use staan and liggen, like we did before. So, the stool staat in the kamer, but and sleutels zitten in mijn boekzak. So, that's a thing you need to pay attention to. Now, there's only one verb left, and that's hangen. And hangen is the easiest one. Hangen, you might already know it, it means to hang. And so we use it for everything that is hanging up, and that's pretty easy. Just look at it and see if it's hanging up. For example, a coat, or curtains, or a shirt. They can all hang up. And so we use hangen. Let's just look at a few examples. Het hemd hangt in de kast. Het hemd hangt in de kast. The shirt is in the closet. Now, imagine a shirt on a coat hanger hanging up 
inside my closet, in my wardrobe, then we would say, Haman. It's pretty easy. Another example, De gordijnen hangen voor het raam. De gordijnen hangen voor het raam. The curtains are in front of the window. Here we use hangen because curtains hang up. Notice how I said hangen in plural because gordijnen is also in plural, so you have to conjugate the verb. A third example, de boom hangt over de muur. De boom hangt over de muur. Now, imagine a wall and a tree with a branch hanging over the wall. Then you could say, de boom hangt over de muur. The tree hangs over the wall. You won't use this one nearly as often as staan or liggen or even zitten, but it's still good to know. Now, to finish the video, let's do a little exercise. Try to translate these sentences into Dutch. You can pause the video if you need more time to think. First example. There is a tree in the garden. There is a tree in the garden. How would you say this in Dutch? The answer is... Er staat een boom in de tuin. Er staat een boom in de tuin. Now, why do we use staan here? Well, if you think back to what I told you in the beginning of the video, staan is used for everything that's kind of long and tall, that stands up tall. And a tree is definitely a good example of that. The tree is not lying down, but, you know, it is possible that a tree lies down, and then we would use liggen, but if there's a tree in the garden, we'd imagine it's standing up nicely, and then we would use the boom staat in the time. Let's try another sentence. The documents are on your desk. The documents are on your desk. How would you say that? The answer is... De documenten liggen op je bureau. De documenten liggen op je bureau. Why do we use liggen here? Well, documents are flat. They don't have much structure to them. So if you try to put them down, they'll fall over, and they'll lie flat. So we say, liggen. Let's try another one. The pen is in my bag. The pen is in my bag. Here's the answer. The pen zit in mijn tas. The pen zit in mijn tas. Now why do we use zitten here? Well, remember how zitten is used for objects that are inside something else? Well, if the pen is inside my bag, I have to use zitten. The pen zitten in tas. Let's try one more example. Your picture is in the newspaper. Your picture is in the newspaper. How would you say that in Dutch? Here's the answer. Je foto staat in de krant. Je foto staat in de krant. That'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have one little message at the end of the video for those who stuck around to the end. As you might have noticed, I haven't uploaded a lot of content in the past year, two years on this channel, but I fully intend to continue. I keep getting messages of people who say they like my videos or they want me to create new videos and I always intended to do so. I just didn't have a lot of time. Now creating these videos takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money to buy equipment, and you know, it just wasn't always possible. Now these videos will always be free and I'll always continue making free videos, so don't worry about that, but if you want to support this channel. I've created a Patreon page, and Patreon allows you to basically leave a little tip for every video that I create. It can be as little as, you know, one dollar. It doesn't have to be much at all, and don't feel obliged to donate anything if you can't afford it, but I would definitely appreciate it. For example, I'd love to buy a microphone so that you can hear me better. I would definitely make making these videos a lot easier. And, you know, any money that I would get through donations would go to a microphone for this channel. 
And that's exactly what I intend to do with the Patreon page. If you want to support me, if you want to say thank you in a monetary way, only if you're able to, please consider becoming a member on my Patreon page. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.